Spyro the Dragon has held a special place in my heart for as long as I can remember. The memories of the original trilogy are like cherished treasures, and to this day, I find myself still revisiting them. While I adore all the games in the series, it's hard not to play favorites. Just like any parent secretly favoriting one child, I have my standout, and that beloved gem is none other than Ripto's Rage. Approximately a year following the debut of the original Spyro the Dragon, the gaming world is graced with Spyro the Dragon Ripto's Rage. It's the quintessential sequel, staying true to its roots while expanding on the foundation laid by its predecessor. In the first game, our cast was predominantly Norks and Dragons, but in Ripto's Rage, a vibrant new world unfolds, teeming with fascinating characters and captivating locations. But here's the thing. Okay, okay, for real. Here's the thing. <laughs> Can't believe I got y'all twice with that. But, for real, for real, as much as I love this game, I have one little issue with it. Ripto feels kind of like an afterthought in the first Spyro the Dragon. Nasty Nork and the dragons had a clear and long-standing conflict. Nasty, fueled by the dragon's trash talking, sought revenge and took action. In the third installment, the sorceress harbors a dislike for dragons, specifically desiring the wings of baby dragons to maintain her magical powers. Now, in the second game, Ripto simply shows up and declares himself as the ruler of Avalar, and that's the end of the story. In both the first and third Spyro games, the villains transform the gems into minions that do their bidding, Norks and Rhinox respectively. These minions actively obstruct Spyro, working to impede his progress and advance their master's plans. However, the second game takes a different turn. The level's antagonists aren't gems brought to life by Ripto, nor do they seem to be aligned with him in any way. It seems like many of the situations in these levels would have occurred with or without Ripto's arrival. Consider the Yeti in Colossus, seemingly just acting like a regular Yeti. The idols in Idol Springs were carved by the builders and just happened to come to life independently. Have you guys ever seen Chucky? It's kinda like that. The bugs in Robotica Farms attack crops. That's just typical bug behavior. While you might argue that Ripto's arrival could have acted as a sort of catalyst escalating these situations more quickly, these enemies aren't explicitly working for him. Notably, they aren't gems brought to life by him either. When defeated, these enemies transform into souls that aid in activating power-ups. Alright, let's move along to one of my favorite levels in Spyro Ripto's Rage, Fracture Hills. So, in Fracture Hills, Spyro arrives to assist the satyrs, who find themselves turned to stone by the Earthshakers due to playing music that irks them. Or, at least that's one side of the story. Now, let's consider an alternative perspective. These are the Earthshakers, toiling away in the mines adjacent to molten lava. At day's end, they can't even find solace, as the satyrs play music which some might argue isn't very good. But let's delve deeper. Did you catch that? Did you just witness that? Armed with their bagpipes, these sayers possess the ability to shatter stone. Suddenly, what seemed like a simple disturbance of the peace transforms into an actual act of terrorism. How should creatures made of stone react to this? Perhaps the satyrs should count themselves fortunate that they are merely being encased in stone. That's like the magical equivalent of jail to them. If it were me, I'd go straight to beheading. Anyways, shifting gears. What exacerbates this entire situation is Spyro himself. He enters the scene, hears one side of the story, and promptly takes action, deciding to confront and execute the Earthshakers. Who appointed this man judge, jury, and executioner? It's as if he just drops in and declares, well, that settles it. I've heard enough. Yeah, he's always saying stuff. I remember that one time. Hey! You just got here! Moreover, Spyro doesn't hesitate to play both sides when the need arises. One moment, he's assisting the landlubbers in Zephyr. In the blink of an eye, he's over at Breeze Harbor aiding the birds and getting what seems to be a warship airborne. But, you know what? Despite these minor concerns I've highlighted, Ripto's Rage remains one of my all-time favorite games. It's truly worth exploring. Appreciate you guys tuning into my video, and I look forward to catching you all in the next one.